stuff. Okay, it's a, it's a pleasure to have uh, Nila Kanta Banu here with us. Welcome, Banu. Thank you. The pleasure is mine. So first, I want to say a huge congratulations on winning the Mental Calculations World Championship. Um, quite a dominant score, I think. Uh, was it like 65 points or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. 65 points, it was. Well done, well done. And uh, first, just so people know a little bit about you, um, I understand that you're only 20 years, years old, right? And you're based yeah. uh, in India, where whereabouts? Yeah, so I'm from Hyderabad, India. And yes, I am 20 years old, just uh, out of college. So, and this actually isn't the first time that you've showed your, your mental prowess. Uh, so to speak. Uh, I understand that you're also uh, a world record hoard holder of several uh, mental calculations uh, records. Yes, so um, this is my first Mind Sports Olympiad and the first Mental Calculation World Championship. Although I've been uh, quite active around uh, doing calculations and sort of taking part in international competitions and breaking records. So um, I currently hold four world records which are accredited by the Limca book, which is the Indian counterpart to the Guinness book, in being uh, quicker at a certain type of calculations than anyone ever was. So, so one of those, I believe, is, uh, it sounds simple, but it's just to take a two-digit number and, and add it to itself. Uh, um, I think, uh, what is that called? It's like the, the human calculator, uh, fastest human calculator record, right? Something like that. Yes. So the fastest human calculator record is something which, I think is very close to my heart because um, this record sort of demonstrates um, a certain uh, skill and also tells the viewer, someone who's actually watching this demonstration to see and peek into how a human calculator or a mental athlete functions right here. And so the objective is to take a two digit number and add it to itself as quickly as possible. So the task is quite simple, take 78, at 78 to 78, 78, you get 78, 156, 234, and so on. And uh, speak out the intermediate results. So in fact, what I would say is that this record is an example also to show how quickly your brain can think. And also the pace at which I go giving the answers out, which you will see, is limited by the speed at which I can talk. So I mean, the brain is quicker than what it is. And I'm just like, okay, I mean, I have to translate this into a physical note. So yeah, I mean, I'm limited by it. So it's as fast so, as you so can. Let me ask you, because I, I know we're going to get into this a bit, but I know that you've also mentioned uh, that there's a big difference between using memory tricks to, to actually uh, calculate things and, and, add, and what would be considered raw calculation, where you're actually calculating something from scratch on the spot. So, so when you're doing, you're adding uh, these numbers, and obviously there's only uh, nine, there's, I'm sorry? There's only one method to do it. There's only yes, one. Yes, okay. Oh, there's only one method to do it. Okay, so, um, so, there's a, so memory doesn't really come into play in something like this. You have to literally just do it. Absolutely. Because you, could, because you could memorize, I guess, all the paths, like for, there aren't that many two-digit numbers, right? Yeah, that is quite possible. And that's the reason why in one of my record attempts, I actually did a few variations of the same to showcase that this is beyond memory. And the reason is, and the way in which I've done it is probably take uh, base numbers and add numbers to it. So let's say if you give me 78 and 67, I'm gonna start from 78 and I'm gonna add 67 from there. So there's no chance that I remember 99 times 99, 9,801 combinations of things, which is, that's quite not possible. Also what I've also done, demonstrated very recently, is you take two digit numbers, two two digit numbers, and add it back and forth. So it's 74 plus 67, mm, yeah. 74 plus 67. That's cool. 74 plus 67. So it also gets the attention into the picture. These are cool. This sounds like these are the equivalent to someone going, you know, to the gym and doing different types of exercises, right? Like between push-ups and chin-ups, you're, you're mixing, you're, you know, you're trying different things. That's really cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, mental calculation for me is that. Mental calculation is a way in which I exercise my brain. And this is done through structural uh, ways. I mean, your addition is like your cardio. Your, your multiplication is the weights. So at the end of the day, if you're, if you're uh, probably sort of, let's say, running around and using your car to go from some place to the other, that would not count into the amount of uh, uh, calories you've burnt. And that's what memory is. Memory is a shortcut, just like how your car is a shortcut towards running. So uh, that's the reason why I usually try doing the crudest of tasks, while, which, is, which is, let's say, addition. 
multiplication, recursive addition, subtraction. There's no way you can optimize this further. This is as crude as it can be. So speaking of uh, crude uh, exercise, I guess crude calculations uh, without memory, let's, let's have a, a, few, a few little demos. So I guess uh, I'll give you a number. And as soon as I give it to you, I, you'll, from what I understand, you will just try adding it to itself for 15 seconds. And I, yes. should, I, should I use a stopwatch or something to, to uh, keep you track? Can. You can. Yeah. What you can also do is you can pull out your calculator and try racing past me. So oh, I probably, uh, I, I doubt my fingers will be anywhere close to as fast as you are. Um, yeah. But yeah, I can do that. Let me hold on. Let me get my phone. One sec. Um, cool. And we don't need to, to break a world record. You know, you already hold your own the world record here. We just want a little, just a little taste for uh, what it's sure. all about. Um, so I'm going to take my stopwatch. And as soon as I say start, I'll, you, you know, I'll give you the number. Then you start, I'll go. And, and I will say stop when it gets to 15 seconds. Yeah? Absolutely. OK. So for the people who are watching this, I mean, what we're doing is just going to start, let's say, the number is 38. We're just adding 38 to 38, 76, 114, 152, and so on. I mean, because I'm going to, when I start, it's going to be very quick. So I thought I'll just make a point. It just doesn't, shouldn't, shouldn't look like Banu rapping. So, yeah. Okay, here we go. Banu rapping sounds cool, actually. I'd like to, to see some math raps, actually. But yeah. uh, here we go. The number is 27. 27, 54, 81, 108, 135, 162, 189, 216, 243, 270, 297, 324, 351, 378, 405, 432, 415, 486, 513, 545, 67, 594, 621, 648, 675, 702, 729, 756, 783, 810, 837, 864, 891, 900, 945, 972, 991, 026, 1053, 108, 0, 1, 0, 7, 1, 1, 3, 4, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, Really, and it was actually almost 16. How, what was the number at the end? I mean, let's just reduce it to, it was 1161. I mean, if I reduce a couple from there, that would be uh, 1,107. That's still 41 times, which equals my world record. So, <laughs> so you, still, you still got it. So hold on, let's try one more time, because obviously people could say, hey, um, you know, you've memorized perhaps the, you know, 27. So we'll, why don't we use another, I'll give you a base. And then I'll give you a number. Just like you said, that's a raw, that's a very raw calculation. Like you said, no, no memory could be in play there. And we, let's, yeah. and I think 10 seconds is enough. So, cool. sure, so, why we'll do, not? so we'll do that for 10 seconds. So the base is 88. Okay. And the number is 53. Go. 88, 141, 194, 247, 300, 353, 406, 459, 512, 560, 561, 871, 724, 777, 830, 883, 936, 989, 1042, 1095, 1148, 1201, 1254, 1201, 1201. I did say stop, but yes, yes. No, that, was, that was brilliant, brilliant and amazing. And wow, I think you were at 1254, just, or just about to get there. Uh, yeah. So brilliant. Um, Awesome. Well, clearly, as you say, you're super fast and it's hard for you to verbalize how fast you are, right? Like even faster yes. than that. So that's, that's really cool. I wonder if I mentioned, oh, is... I mean, the, 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 the tongue slows you down. I mean, that's yeah. the only thing. Yeah. By the way, this is um, just, uh, uh, just to bring it in from a completely different direction. I just want to share, it sounds really bizarre, but let's, let's mix it in. I want to talk about the brain for a second because uh, the brain is an amazing thing, right? And um, I will share that I've had for quite some time uh, a phobia of needles and blood. And, uh, and I've actually, I've gotten really good at kind of like getting over it by doing some CBT and so like, you know, exposure therapy. But one of the things that I learned, funnily enough, is doing what you just did. One of the best ways apparently to deal with anxiety is distraction. And apparently the brain, the brain only has a certain amount of bandwidth. And if you do what you just did, which is, try and calculate by adding numbers and focus on it. The, the brain is completely focused on the task and it Absolutely. cannot think of anything else. And it's not bizarre at all, at all, Ethan. So the reason is, let me tell you, um, with my uh, startup here in India, we work on distraction management using arithmetic. This is something which we use as therapy tools. We have clients where we actually do this. I'm not even kidding. So we had a set of doctors who were having um, problems Post um, post anxiety issues after uh, after uh, an operation an, a, a procedure, sure. and that's because the professional life sort of comes into personal life. Let's say a doctor is is operating a kid who's who's the age of his own kid, 
th there is a lot of things which come in. So that's the reason why we were we actually went ahead and told that counting, doing mental calculation on the back end is an absolutely good way to distract yourself. And I've been doing projections like these in events where I talk to the person while I do a calculation on the back side. Well, I, well, I, well, I answer a rapid fire and I do calculations on the back side. And someone asks me, what's your age, Bhanu? And I somehow end up adding a 20 to it too. So yeah, I mean, that's the only thing. But otherwise, distraction management using arithmetic is a thing. And um, that's one of my research papers which I've sent in to a couple of psychology journals very recently. I totally believe in it. And actually, this was something for a friend of mine who was one of the coaches for uh, GB's uh, badminton team. And, and he taught me this because when he was training with, with elite athletes, he would sometimes have them do that in order to calm their anxiety before a big match. So literally before going out to play, just take those numbers, keep adding them to themselves. And you just, you can't, you forget about everything else for a second. Perfect meditation. So, perfect. Perfect. It's a, it's a different, yeah, it's exactly. Cause it's like, it's a bit more than just a mantra, right? You're, cause you, yes. you're, you're, you're actually, you're, 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 ha you're doing exercise with your brain and you, you, you push everything else out. So, yes. so very powerful. And for me, I have to say it's, it's, it's worked wonders. So, uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. And I was able to use it, uh, you know, uh, when my wife gave birth, uh, I was there, I was able to cut the umbilical cord. I kept my cool. And whenever I started to feel a little stressed, I actually tried to add numbers and it really helped. Uh, so yes. anyway, that's, so it just goes to show that sometimes uh, mental exercise can also have mental health benefits as well. Absolutely. So uh, math as an individual, uh, um, let's say, uh, subject is usually talked about how it has its impact in technology, in science, in, in the STEM fields. Yes. But the impact of science on human cognition is something which is phenomenal. Piaget's theory, go to Chomsky. Cognition and literacy are the pillars of what uh, human cognition is all about. And um, I mean, it's, it's not bizarre if I go ahead and claim that you watch the world around you through the numeracy you develop, just like how I, how I say that, how Chomsky says that you look at the world through your mother tongue. Quite similar in your um, arithmetic yeah, this, is, this is not Chomsky for people who don't know. Yeah, this is not Chomsky, yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. MIT linguist uh, uh, and philosopher. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And add on, I did linguistics as one of my big papers in first year of grad. So yeah, that's how I know Chomsky. So, so actually, okay, so let's... Um, a couple of things we should say. So just, just to be clear, first year of grad, but you mean, because you're still in your bachelor's degree, you mean still in, yes. your, in, your, in, your, in, your, in your university uh, yes. uh, study. So, because I believe, yeah, because you're just finishing, you're doing a math degree. And yes. uh, my understanding is you, what, what, what's cover all these things, but what you're doing is already amazing. You've already given three TEDx talks about, about math and, and improving the world, right? Uh, and, uh, and you've got, tell us you've got a startup that's supposed to help bring math to like, rural villages in India. Uh, yes. let's, let's hear about this. Uh, Exploring Infinities is a startup which I founded the moment I broke my world record because I mean the question, the existential crisis is what drives me forward, I, I would say, which would says, hey Bhano, you're the fastest human calculator, so what? I mean, what are you going to do with this? Um, I mean, are you going to treasure this skill set like a lot of people have in the past or are you going to use this uh, to sort of teach people to be not scared of mathematics as much as they are because I mean three out of every four children in the government schools or the public sector schools in India or even for that matter the entire world call themselves to be math phobic and this math phobia starts from the beginning and the exposure to arithmetic in specific so oh, why, why, why is that yeah, why, why are people scared what happens there so um Okay, broad reasons which I would want to bucket them and is, is two, one, intimidating math teachers. Math teachers who always talk about excellence and talk about math being a hard subject. The emphasis on the subconscious trail leading people into believing that math is something which they can't do, number one, because people intuitively are not bad with mathematics. If you look at it broadly, when we were kids, did we count the number of tiles in our park when we walked? I'm sure we did, every one of us, regardless of where we are from the world, would have done it. And because intuitionally, human beings are such beings which want to make sense of the world, minimize the information coming in by understanding quantities. So uh, bad, bad mathematical teachers in terms of how their objectives are, although this is changing in, in, let's say, a few developing countries, but it's still bad in a lot of places which I have personally visited. 
So, um, and the second and the more important thing is that the first waves of math education is arithmetic only. And the emphasis on arithmetic, being a mental calculator myself, I'm telling you, is a little too much. I mean, uh, is a little too much. The emphasis which we give on arithmetic makes a student actually believe that the entire ocean of mathematics is as engaging as the waves which hit them in the first run. Although, I mean, I mean, this is something which we experimented with rural school, rural school kids. Teaching group theory to eighth graders who don't understand what calculus is. Teaching yes. integration to fifth graders, talking about it in terms of area alone. So experiments like these have proven that kids, some kids excel in abstract mathem mathematical thought way more than they excel in arithmetic mathematical thought. Nothing wrong there. It's just saying that we labeling math to arithmetic in the school scenario makes people scared because arithmetic can get intimidating when not taught the right way. So I think I would, the, the startup which I had broadly works with these uh, government school children who don't have access to, let's say, education, which, which can revolutionize. They do have access to education in general. That's something which India or, or countries around me, Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and, and let's say even to a certain extent, a couple of Eastern European countries have been working towards literacy is in place, but the process and the immersiveness is a long, long way to go. And Exploring Infinities is trying to do that by gamifying the entire process of learning mathematics. Don't be math phobic. It's okay if you don't like maths. I mean, hey kid, if the kid says, hey, Manu, I don't really like math. Um, I can always do it on my calculator. It's easy. I don't need it. Fantastic. I, I, that, that's fantastic. As long as you're comfortable to do that. But saying that I'm not going to do math because I'm scared about it has to change. And I'm here to change it. At least in my country with the government partnerships, we have reached to a million kids in the last three months with TV broadcasts, the cable wow. TV, because internet penetration in India is not as much as we would want it to be in the rural, rural uh, countryside. So we are doing it by TV broadcasts and 10 lakh. I mean, lakh is the Indian term guys. A million kids are watching this on a daily basis. And I think, I think this is what I'll say the Mind Sports Olympiad gold reaches out to and what, what it represents. Not just a victory, but a change, but a change which happens. That's amazing. So first of all, again, uh, thank you for all the great work that you're doing. And, and I hope that those numbers keep growing. That's already, those are incredible numbers. And there's already so many people out there that we can help and inspire. And you, you are an inspiration to people. Um, so I, I heard that uh, you, you're interested in going on to, when you finish your, your bachelor's, which will be at the end of this year, um, going on to graduate school, maybe pursuing also a career in academia perhaps as well. Uh, is that something you're interested in? Because I think you also mentioned you're going to take a year off working for McKinsey uh, right now, right? So, um, I mean, I was uh, supposed to be flying to the Great Britain right now. <laughs> and settling somewhere in central London for London School of Economics. Although that's not quite happening this year because of the, how things have moved online. And I think I have a couple of other experiences which I want to capture from the busy London streets. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm taking a year of uh, things away because, I mean, I still have a government project on plate. My startup still goes on. And there's a lot of other stuff to do anyway, but I'm taking an entry role in McKinsey, McKinsey, the Indian office for uh, exploring a little bit of business because, because I aspire to be someone who's changing mathematical education through enterprise, not just mere academic changes, but through an enterprise uh, and probably be the Kumon of tomorrow. Although, I mean, it's, it's quite, quite differently styled um, um, goals and um, reach and the audiences to work with. But yeah, I think that's the way ahead. And I think one year of business experience would get me there. And, Probably sometime next year, I'll be on my way to London to continue. What? The first, McKinsey's a great place to work. Uh, so yes. I hope you, you enjoy that. And there's a lot of very bright people there. Uh, it, it, is, it is a great company. And uh, Nellisee sounds like a great place. Um, so yeah, it sounds like the future is open, right? The future is open, yes. That's cool. And will you, will you be back next year to defend your crown at the Mind Sports Olympiad, whether it's you know, online or, or offline? Oh, absolutely. Why not? So, um, I mean, 
So the thing is that I'm quite a moody performer and, and the mood is not just because of this, but I mean, I was away from mental calculation for three long years after the 2016 mental calculation World Cup. I've been away from mental calculation performance competitions for three long years because I had to figure out a purpose. I mean, let me just tell you that I, I mean, for me, it was like, okay, you're going to win another gold. But what are you going to do with it matters to me the most. And I figured that out right now. Yeah. So I would say that that's the reason why I jumped on to the Mind Sports Olympia this time when the Mental Calculation Championship followed. And um, yeah, I think I did prove my point about talking on memory and uh, memory related competitions and how they should be fundamentally a little separate from this. But yes, next year, the crown, I mean, if everything goes right, I'll probably be in London while performing in London. That, that would be great. Well, let's, before, before we wrap up, just to clarify for everyone, uh, we, we talked at the beginning about raw calculation, but uh, the uh, how memory sometimes used as, as a, a sort of crutch. Uh, so, for example, um, I know that uh, you're you're awesome at the cubed roots, but uh, one of the tricks that people do sometimes, and I think I think you've used this as well, is is to memorize the cubed roots of prime numbers. And then you, exactly and then, what I did this time. I mean, and then, and uh, all I mean is use, use those prime numbers because any, any number can be factored out of prime numbers, basically. And then eventually a small multiplication will lead you to something which is actually supposed to be O to the N by 3, O to the N by 3 complexity into something which, which is straight out of your memory book. So, um, so, I mean, I'd say that mental calculation championships are still transitioning. I would say that Mind Sports Olympiad did move a very major pin in this by streaming this online. That's something due credit everything to the MSO team because the amount of viewership I can't tell you. I mean, I forwarded, I mean, people know me as the fastest human calculator, has four records, but I think over a hundred friends of mine have seen me in action this time and they were all on the edge of their seats. They're like, is Bhanu going to win? Is he going to win? And I see so many people tweeting all the way along saying that, hey, I'm going to cheer. Is this guy doing it? Is, the, is Lebanon taking home the medal this time? Is Banu going to do it? So the amount of hype which has been built around the sport like this, all credits MSO, fantastic work. And I would say eventually... I would like credit to Daniel Timms who, uh, who organized uh, this year's event. Yes. And um, because we almost, it was almost canceled. I mean, this is an event that we've had every year since 1997. And, you know, because of COVID, uh, we weren't sure if we could actually do it. And, you know, he was able to, to keep it going. And so. you pulled a fantastic thing off. And I'll say in the days to come, what I would see is probably dueling. I mean, that's something which I was suggesting, yeah. uh, suggesting a lot of communities across global mental calculation is, is figure out a model to duel and that's going to be your fide. That's going to be your fide for mental calculation. Just, uh, just to be clear for the people watching, dueling is when people go head to head. And, and I think that's yeah, one -on -one, one -on -one, one -on -one. Uh, you know, very entertaining thing to watch. Yes. So all credits to MSO for doing this and, uh, and, and Daniel Tim's uh, fantastic work and the streams have done amazing job to how this pans out. So, um, I mean, it's, it's, an, it's, it's a very good experience to actually be able to take part in a calculation competition right from home and uh, all well checked all cross checks. I mean, I'm a man who's a little skeptical about, let's say, uh, 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 this is this going to be fair. But I mean, the amount of rigor which was there in checking and understanding uh, who's doing what and how is he or she doing it is, is I think, unprecedented and something which calls out for uh, global uh, support and, and, and probably even people uh, across the country and across the world should probably learn from. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh... I think uh, I think it was a good event, and uh, like I said, I can't take credit for it. Uh, we had great people doing it, uh, uh, but ultimately, what made it a great event uh, are champions like yourself, uh, you know, and that uh, that that's what made it a wonderful event. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the competition is what I mean. The the, the kind of people who are around you, the kind of people who sort of compete, and the bond which you build over that that six to seven hours. And, and, and the adrenaline rush is unprecedented. And uh, I mean, I'd probably say this is, the, this is the most fun time I've had in the COVID times. And yeah, I mean, because it's, because it's something which you have been doing for a long time and simulating that and doing a world level championship right from your home and eventually winning it. I mean, phenomenal, phenomenal for me.
It is. It is amazing and very, very well deserved. And and just talking to you as well, I can tell that uh, you're a great ambassador for uh, for the sport of mental calculations and and for much more in terms of just just for the human potential in general. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, that's ideally how I would want to promote myself and see up there is because there's not a lot of people talking about mental calculation. There's not a lot of people talking about mind sports. There's not a lot of people talking about math as an art. And that's something which I think I am in a position to change. One is that I am on the non-geeky side of mathematics. I'm actually, I mean, I might be geeky in my own really other closet ways. I'm not going to tell you how, but, uh, but, but I mean, when you perform it's in front of a stage and the stage collapses for you, it's a different set not a very mathematical set in general. And that's something which is turning eyeballs. I mean, if, I mean, uh, would you expect um, a, a worker at McDonald's cheering for your uh, calculation competition? If, it's, if, if, it was a, if it was a paper presentation competition in mathematics? No, not quite, right? But this is where the fun element is there. I mean, why do sports, in fact, eventually thrive? It's because of that being on the edge of the seat while you watch something. And that's something which, mental calculation is, is here to produce. And in the long run, I'm sure that this will be one of the biggest sports there is. And people also sporting up, I think the three top players this year who have finished the gold, silver and bronze being from India, Lebanon and the United Arab Emirates. It's something, something which, is, which is great because, yeah. um, because, I mean, it also talks about how um, the sport has sunk a little deeper into uh, countries where where uh, you wouldn't expect a lot of um, these uh, these trends to pick. Very recently, I did come across a few people uh, from Algeria, Tanzania, reaching out to me saying that, hey, I want to take part in the MSO. Could you help me do so? I, can you help me train? So, um, yeah, I mean, I'd say definitely, because, because at the end of the day, what we want is more mental calculators. I don't mind not winning the gold for the next straight six years as long as these six people have been inspired by me. Because at the end of the day, that's good for the sport. And I can probably always bounce back the seventh year and be like, hey, this gold is mine, guys. So, uh, mine to take, mine to, mine to win this year. So, um, in terms of brain prowess, um, even right now, we still talk about math and uh, calculations to still be an academic sport. Uh, I mean, people and the people who take it up, kids, do it because they think that the parents think probably the kids are going to thrive in math in life probably do good in their SATs uh, and their ACTs. Um, that's probably why they're here. Eventually they might find their passion, but that has to change. That, and that will change only when people start understanding and, and they will soon that, uh, that uh, the criticism, the common criticism is why calculate when you have a calculator. And it's, as I, as I mentioned in, in a conversation very before is, it's equal. I mean, this logical statement is equivalent talking about how and why does Usain Bolt run? The Usain, Usain Bolt could use it, use it, use a car and go for the 100 meters in two seconds. Yeah. Probably use a Tesla to go there. So uh, why does he run? It's because he's showing how capable a human body is and it's a celebration of it and, and the effort which goes in and, and inspiring the generation ahead in being physically fit. And this goes the same way. Why does a musician cover the same song again if it's oh, on oh. Spotify? Why does a musician go to a bar and sing the same song? So when you look at art, look at art, but math and mental math is still an art. And, and once this is communicated, I think people would understand why calculators are those geeky nerds who want to showcase that prowess to the world. I love it. I really do. It's awesome. Um, so once again, congratulations. May you keep inspiring people and, I, and we will be here to, to cheer you on. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Itan. Yes, thank you.